Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the module Model Theory. Here we are going to deal with the role of models in science and design and their usage in the context of planning and design processes. This shall help you to understand the basics of abstract thinking as foundation for solving complex planning problems. In this first part we look into different kinds of models and for which purpose they can be used. In the first chapter we look at the definition of models and some exemplary models for planning and design. There are different models for very different purposes. Starting from building modules to get an idea of a future building to technical models explaining certain physical principles, for example the ones of an electric motor as you can see it in the middle, up to models that are made to understand how we imagine abstract things like molecules and atoms that we cannot see or feel, but we can have a model about of them. Although these examples could not be more different from each others, they are all be considered as models. We begin with scientific models. In general, they have three characteristics. First, representation. A model is always a representation of something, a representation of a natural or artificial original, which could be a model itself. Second, reduction. A model does not capture all attributes of the original, but only the ones which were considered as relevant by the modeler. Third, pragmatism means orientation towards usefulness. A model is not assigned to an original by itself. The assignment is determined by the questions for whom, why and for what. A model is used by the model creator or model user within a certain period of time and purpose for an original. The model is thus interpreted. I very much like this definition because it gives you an idea that we always use models in our daily life in order to understand our environment. The diagram at the top illustrates the modeling process. The encoding of a real system to a formal system, which we consider in the next chapter of this lecture. The implication of the formal model is what we can do with our model. For example, we can run a land use simulation, what we will see in the following modules. The decoding process in, is the interpretation of the results of a model or a simulation. So what we do with the result of a model after we run, for example, um, a land use simulation. In the field of architecture, we usually understand a model to be the representation of a real object in a reduced and abstracted representation. Whereas a module can also serve as inspiration for new design as the Klein bottle in the illustration above. The scientific usage of a model is for understanding certain aspects of a spatial configuration, for example. By using a network analysis that shows the street network um, where the highest pedestrian potential is shown um, with the red lines in the network. This kind of analysis is often referred to as a space syntax model. The two models illustrate also the difference between analytical models, which are made for understanding something, as used in the um, in scientific models usually. So scientific models are made to analyze aspects to understand their internal um, mechanisms, how they work. These models deal with the tame problems. In contrast to models that are used for the synthesis of something. Usually in design and planning, we want to do something new, which means we synthesize a new artifact. These models have to deal with the so-called wicked problems. Wicked problems 
are already difficult to formulate and they have no ideal solution. There are various models with very different representation forms. Drawings can be considered as models with a relatively weak mapping from its representation, so the drawing itself, to um, the represented artifact. For example, a building, as you see it in the sketch behind me. In form of a modern rendering, they can also represent a design idea or a concept. In contrast to these visual representations, we can also use text as representation. The example of the ideal, the poem, the ideal by Kurt Tucholsky is a great example that these models are able to express impossible worlds that you cannot construct, you cannot really draw them, but you can describe them very well by using um, poetics or text form, text as representation. The form of the representation is also called notation. Different models use individual notations. Music, for example, has its very well-defined notation systems that allows relatively precise mapping from the notation to the music one cannot see anymore, in contrast to the piece of paper where the music, a piece of music is written, um, but you can hear it after you map it um, to the sound of an instrument. In architecture, we use plans as representations and instructions for the production of the buildings or cities. Mathematics, in turn, use numerics and symbolic representations to express geometric or <laughs> algebraic laws. Based on the examples of space syntax analysis, which was shown before, we can illustrate the range between simple and very complex models. The space syntax network analysis model can be considered as a relatively simple model because it works with a street network without any additional information. Its internal mechanisms are also relatively simple. So you compute basically the shortest path between A and B and therefore you only need the information of the um, geometry of the street networks or how individual segments are connected with each other. In contrast, there are agent-based models in which each person or household can be, can be represented by an agent and linked to individual rules how the agents shall behave in a simulated environment which can again be very complex. And in this environment, also the agents can interact and create emerging patterns and react with different rules against each other and so on and so on. So it's obvious that such an agent-based model is much more complex and requires more data and more rules for the agents um, than the space syntax model. We are often confronted with the question which of these possible models that are available um, is the right one for a certain problem. So shall I select always the most complex and maybe uh, because of its complex one may assume it's also precise and represents the problem very well. Whereas that's not the right way of thinking. The question is not whether a model is correct in some abstract sense. Um, or if the model is, an reali is as realistic as possible, the question is always um, whether it is useful for a, for a particular purpose. For example, um, with the used space syntax model, this may be very useful if you don't have any more information and if you are fine with learning about the pedestrian potentials in a network, then you may start with this for certain abstract decisions in the beginning of planning purpose. Whereas if you want to simulate very detailed behaviors of households in a city, um, you may not be happy with the space syntax model. You may need a more precise agent-based model. So it always depends on the purpose, what you want to achieve with your model. 
There is no other criteria to define if a model is right or wrong, because as we will see later, all models are wrong and that's um, not a problem, that's the feature of these models because they abstract from reality. They have to be wrong in the sense that they have to be different from reality.